Hello, beloved. Now we've all heard about the Ark of the Covenant. Um, we've all heard about, um, praise our Lord and Savior first, Jesus Christ, praise you, Lord. And uh, thank you, Abba Father, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we are in Psalm 19, and um, we were talking about the Ark of the Covenant. Um, Jesus Christ has a new covenant, um, but there have been people from the beginning who would be part of that covenant. Um, and I believe this is the Israel of God because they believe God, number one, and then follow him and obey him. And their voice, you can't speak um, from the bridegroom, who is the son, Jesus Christ, the son of God. You can't speak with unless he's in you, Christ in us, the hope of glory. You can't speak um, from the bridegroom's voice. And in Revelation, you see the bridegroom and the bride, the voice of the bridegroom that's in the bride. This is not our own words. This is we agree with the bridegroom in his word. It's his word of God. We give him all the praise, honor, and glory. And so we have faith, those of us of, of the household or household of faith. We're in the household of our, our Abba Father, um, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, the Father of Lights and Jesus Christ, um, the Father and the Son. Um, the Son is very important part of that verse of Isaiah um, 9, 6, I believe it is. It talks about the Father and the Son, the Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And in Genesis, God said, let us make man in, his, in our image, our. Let us make them, when he talked about man. And that is a type, a kind. Um, there is a man and a woman. There's no transgender. God did not make it male, female. He, it's very clear in the scriptures. And you see the Father and the Son, our. And then it says God made them. So the child of God, Jesus Christ, who was from who is everlasting, Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. So Jesus was from the beginning. And John the Baptist said that, you know, the one that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So he gives life, light to everyone that comes in the world. Now, Satan seeks to steal that light, um, steal that life uh, from God. Um, and that is the problem that we have encountered from the beginning, from Genesis when the serpent the beast that you know those that have the mark of the beast and the fornicators with the beast um, these are the kings of the earth the mighty men the merchant men speaking from another voice but the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride okay so in the scripture see in Psalm, Psalm 19 and in the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ in her will not be the sound of the bride or the bridegroom anymore this is very important scripture, beloved. There comes a time that the merchant's um, merchandise is burned up, as it says in the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ, and um, there's no more um, of uh, corruptible um, to be, no more um, uh, old old man. That I, I don't think that there's going to be any any um, cr ability to be corrupted. Um, I believe that we're all going to be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump. And I do believe that, in fact, whenever we believe Jesus, there is a change, um, a, a beginning of um, a great journey with, with the bridegroom. Okay, It says that we're sealed and seated in heavenly places when we believe. We're translated, that's the word that is used, into the kingdom. And Christ comes and, and is is. We're born again. He is he and us. Praise the Lord. And in Psalm 19, you see something very interesting. And King David knew about it because he was walking with the Lord and listening to him and writing these songs that we could praise him with. And um, when you read the whole thing, it says, you know, the heavens declare the glory of God. So the heavens, the capital T-H-E, heavens were translated into the kingdom of above we're a cloud of witnesses testifying of the Lord okay so we're declaring his glory that it was from the beginning 
And in Isaiah, you see everlasting father, prince of peace. And so it, it continues to talk about their voice. So focusing on there. So we're talking about the heavens declare the glory of God. And then it says, there is no place where their voice, their, T-H-E-I-R, voice is not heard. And it, I'm going to skip through and, and give you some information here. Their line is gone out through all the earth. T-H-E-I-R, there, the heavens, the heavens declare. Their line is gone out through all the earth. Now, in the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ, you see a measuring line. And so we can go from the very beginning of the scriptures to the very end and see people who are speaking with a voice. Okay. And we also know that Jesus sends his holy angels who are in the heavens with the Lord and he is in the highest place. Okay. It says in the scriptures that he was made to sit at the right hand of God. But David, we're talking about King David. King David said, My Lord said unto the, the Lord, Sit thou at my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. So who is Jesus? I think we can all understand who he is. Praise the Lord. And so, and, and whenever he he's talking about the personal and covenant Lord. It's capital L-O-R-D. And I believe that that is Adonai. And there's another place where it is. And it's, if you look it up, the capital L-O-R-D and the capital L, small L-O-R-D, you're talking about the father and the son, the relationship between the father and the son, Elohim, Adonai. Um, and, uh, I believe that's the Hebrew names and, uh, Yahweh, or Yahweh, as it says in the scriptures, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, because he is one, they agree, the Father, the Word, where Jesus was the Word of God become flesh, and the Spirit. And these three are one in heaven. They, they both all testify, they all give a witness, and these three are one in heaven. And in the same way, we are all one body on earth. We all agree with the Word of God. We all agree with the King James Bible being the scriptures that point to him and his father. And so we all agree that um, he is God, period. <laughs> you know, we don't need to go into um, analyzing. We don't need to go into false doctrines. There are false doctrines about um, God and about our, our, our walk. Um, some people think that um, you can do whatever you want in your flesh and it doesn't matter. And um, it really does, even for the believer, it does matter what you feed and do with your body, um, what you do with your arms, the members of your body. And the same with the way with Jesus Christ, the body of Christ. We are members of his body. So it really does matter what we do with our body, okay, with the body of Christ. And we all agree in one. If two don't agree, they can't walk together, it says in the scriptures. So we have to agree that Jesus is the high priest, number one teaching us. Um, he is the light, the word of God guiding us. And in fact, the father is also the husbandman it talks about in the scriptures. He will prune and do whatever he's going to do. Um, those that don't produce fruit, he's going to cut off and cast in the fire. You know, there's a lot of things about that, that, you know, a lot of people don't want to hear, but it's true. Um, so their line is gone out through all the earth their words to the end of the world. Now that part is very important. So you see the measuring line is their voice and their voice are the heavens declaring the glory of God, who is the father, the son, and the Holy ghost. And these three are one. These three agree and testify and witness. That's a heavenly witness that came down to earth and Jesus became a witness from heaven. And then he had children. He breathed on the apostle and said, Receive ye my spirit. So they became part of Jesus, the body. And he was still their head before he was crucified, after he's crucified, and still now. <laughs> we declare the glory of, the, of, of God. And so you continue to go on to the ends of, end of the world. 
in them hath he set a tabernacle. So inside them, a tabernacle. We know that the first tabernacle, Adam, was the first, Adam and Eve. The second was the skin coats put on them, temporary tent dwelling places. It's a temporary body. It's, it's temporary, put outside the paradise of God. And then the third tabernacle, the Lord in heaven who resurrected from the dead, praise his name. Now, in them is hath he set a tabernacle for the Son. Now, this is the Son of Righteousness. This is not the same as what God had created. According to the scriptures, the, this is the Word. He is the righteous. He is the bridegroom. Okay, and he's also the tabernacle. So in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's why it says, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. Okay, do we know these, these words are in the New Testament, beloved, the new covenant, the blood covenant with Christ. Coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. We see in the new covenant, we're running a race with Christ. Praise his name. All right, I'm going to stop this one. We're going to go on to the next one and just understand that David knew who the Lord was. Praise his name. And the heavens declare the glory of the of God. And if you're translated into the kingdom with faith, sealed in Christ in the name of Jesus, and you have to have the right Jesus, Jesus Christ who died, was buried and resurrected. His blood and water was shed for us. He was born of a woman. He had blood and water like we have in our body. Okay. He was buried, as the scriptures say, in the grave. And on the third day, he resurrected from the grave, defeating death. Praise his name. And then he he was seen of Mary Magdalene. Magdalene and he, she, he said, don't touch me. I've not yet ascended to the Father. He went up to the Father, showed him that he had done everything. He said, don't touch me. So I, I believe there was some holiness thing there that had to be done. Something that a high priest would do. Okay, he shed the blood, the Lamb of God. And so he could go into the holiest of holies. Well, he... He was, <laughs> the, he was the holiest of holies, so the, the word of God. And so he knew everything about the law and the prophets. He knew everything. And, uh, because, and he knew what would come in the future because he was Emmanuel, God with us, the Almighty. And so then he goes up, appears before the Father, presents the fact that he has done it. He has re reconciled the kingdom back to um, its rightful place to the Son of Man that God had made. For mankind but in fact God took it out of the hand of, of mankind and put it in his son his everlasting son who cannot be corrupted okay he could have because he was in the flesh but he wasn't because he was all God he was all able to fulfill everything that God had him and so by the spirit and his soul was made to suffer for us praise the Lord we have a soul everybody has a soul so he was made like us Thank you, Lord, although he was the son of God also. And you see in Genesis, Adam was the son of God, okay? You can look that up in, in the New Covenant. God gives a lineage of Jesus, and he was son of God. And so a lot of people in their witchcraft and sorcery have taken advantage of that, and they have, um, and they have really done a lot of wicked with it. Um, Jesus, however, is the only begotten of the father there's a very big difference adam was made out of the dust of the earth and life was breathed into him jesus breathed on his apostles and said receive ye my spirit the the difference is is whenever we are born again we're translated into the kingdom and in that new covenant the blood covenant we always have a mediator that's the son of god that is everlasting um, that's prince of peace he's he's the shalom peace for us between us and the father he's always ministering to us so if a serpent comes and tries to defile you you have a you have an advocate with the father the, the man christ jesus the lord in heaven as it says in first corinthians he is a heavenly body okay um, we will put off this corruptible and put on incorruption and death will be swallowed up in victory because we have him with us that same spirit that quickened jesus will quicken us at the last trump and we will see that we will be with him and we'll be like him. It says that he will bring us where he is. Praise the Lord. So with that, we have to know what King David is saying in, in these scriptures and understand that he is our king. 
and he has a kingdom, praise the Lord, and that we are declaring his glory and all his wonderful works at redeeming his people from the beginning, even with Adam and Eve, he put skin coats over them. He was always saving his people. But this time, it's a better covenant because now we have Jesus. Praise his name, beloved.